Okay, I'd like to start off with questions from the room. Anybody have a question right now? Okay, Kasia. Can we introduce these people for the audience? That... So do you quickly, I actually wanted to do that, I just forgot. Could you quickly introduce yourself? Everybody in turn, start with Roland. I'm Roland Albrecht, um, currently in the office as treasurer and um, in, in the board since half a year or so. And um, basically software developer, known outside the board mostly as a developer of the Overpass API. And on with OpenStreetMap for about uh, 12 years, if I'm counted correctly. Oh no, 14, sorry. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Amanda McCann. I'm also on the board, obviously, um, for um, about two, two and a half years. Um, three years, I don't know. I've been OSM for like 10 years. I work as a day job in Geofabric. I do a lot of, I don't know, mapping and community stuff and sending stickers to people and a little bit of hacking and I don't know, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm also technically the secretary, but I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> so hello, I'm Tobias. I'm yeah, obviously a member of the board, but also of the engineering working group and communications working group of the OpenStreetMap Foundation. I've been involved with OpenStreetMap for um, over a decade. I have lost count of the exact number of years. And yeah, my day job is currently unrelated to OpenStreetMap, so I'm still purely a volunteer in this position. Thank you. Uh, I'm Guillaume. I'm the chairperson of the board. Um, I've been active on OpenStreetMap for, for about a decade as well, more than a decade, like to be as. Um, I map in New York, where I live now. Uh, back then, I mapped in Luxembourg, where I'm from. I'm also active in, in several working groups, um, membership data also liaison with uh, operations and uh, licensing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's still fun, so I still do it. Um, um, yeah, thank you, Jean-Marc. Thank you. I'm Jean-Marc, I've been uh, mapping for about 12 years. Uh, I recently discovered that being at the board has uh, not much to do with mapping. And uh, that's something that many of you should know. Uh, <laughs> my profession has nothing to do with maps. I manage uh, software for telecommunication networks. And uh, well, I'm happy to be there and ask for your questions. OK, so let's try again. Questions from the room? Barry, one of the problems is that I know nearly everybody here that What did you think of Brian's talk? So the question was, what do, does the board think of Florian's talk? I liked it. It confirms that it, it, he came up with many of the things we've already come up with. Uh, so it confirms for me that we're working on the right things, which is really not good at communicating that we're doing that. Um, so maybe I'm not taking it the way he thought I would take it. Um, what do the others think? Yeah, I basically agree with uh, Guillaume. Uh, a lot of these things are on the way. Uh, particularly, we are um, trying to, how we will shape uh, fundraising in the future. This goes quite a while back when there had been a very clear sentiment from the community that we want to grow also financial wise. And uh, so this is underway, but uh, with all the serious projects in OSM, this is a multi-year thing. And uh, I'm totally understanding that it's difficult because you see right now, you see almost nothing of it. And it's probably only starting to be visible once, uh, once we can plan with a bigger budget seriously. Um, one thing I've learned from my OSM work is sometimes you need to say something again and again and again and again. Um, and often when you say it again, someone will have heard it the first time. Like, um, and so yeah, I think that just happens a lot where, where people will not know you've done something. So I, th I think part of that 
like some of the the talk was like, wait, I thought we did that. <laughs> did you not know? <laughs> but maybe we just need to say it a lot. Um, so that that you know is something that if you're running for the board, you should be aware of. <laughs> um, and of course, the fact that people blame you for everything <laughs> is kind of uh, fun. <laughs> Can I add something? Yeah. Or Tobias, do you want to? Yeah. 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 We should do that. Uh, what I completely understand is is the you want to create action, and you it's not sure you're not sure where to start. Um, if if anyone wants to work on anything, Florian has outlined in his talk. Email us. When Guillaume says that uh, many of the topics uh, have begun to be addressed, so that's the case, there have been discussions about, well, maybe not everything you mentioned, but many of it. And uh, it's always more complicated than it seems. There are always side effects. There are always, well, negative impacts and sometimes good reason why some things have been done the way they have been done. There are, there are of course, missed opportunities. There are new direction we could take, but um, those are new, not new discussions, and uh, maybe we should communicate more about uh, the work that has been done. Uh, for example, uh, under the chairmanship of uh, Alan, there's been a workshop on a strategic plan. So the idea of a strategic plan, uh, some, somewhere in our shared documentation, there is something about it. You're talking about uh, a reserve. That's something I talked about uh, before I was elected. I've got a draft somewhere uh, about uh, how that could be done, but we've never discussed it. So it, it, ideas that have been floating around. And um, that there is a case of uh, maybe uh, working a bit more in the open, which is very difficult, because as soon as you float an idea in public, in the circles, of OpenStreetMap, like uh, any such uh, community, it can begin to be confrontational. So it's difficult to float the new ideas before they have been diffused in, in private, in uh, working groups. And that's part of the difficulty of floating new things. Tobias? OK, I'll um, move to an question from online um, because it's a completely predictable book, predictable question the board has an embarrassing lack of diversity how do we fix that run for the board is is the most obvious one um, it's it's something that's difficult to fix for you look at us uh, most of us are white guys um, we we do try to um, uh, encourage people to join working groups if you don't want to join the board yet. Um, we did have uh, wider diversity in the past. Um, is Kate in the room? Kate was chairperson, two chairs before me. Um, we have uh, tried to make... Um, make progress on um, diversity by having, by uh, refreshing our um, community guidelines. Uh, I see Maggie is over there. She did great work on uh, on that. Um, we're also, we don't have all the answers on it. We are very conscious of the problem. Um, we, we are open to any any help or ideas on how to fix that. Um, I'll, I'll pass it. Thank you. Um, just a comment from me. Um, I think that one of the problems is naturally that the board doesn't have this classical strategic role, or only the strategic role in OSMF, and is very operational, and that makes things even more difficult. Anyway, questions here. There's one up there. I've got. The Alan, I've seen you. So. Um, can you talk a little bit about 
what is the responsibility of the board and where it ends. I mean, several people want the contact phone thing tagging solved, but I don't really know if that's your job or where to go for that. At least I'm getting some walking in today. The question, so oh, he, he asked, okay. The question was, um, what are the responsibilities and limits and sort of borders on where what the board does and doesn't do, or what the board is responsible for? Is that correct? Yes, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. For the, board as a, for the board as a whole, I think in principle, there's one simple rule um, if it can be done in the community, in the sense of there are someone in the community stands up to do it, then it's done in the community. So we are more like a catch all for work that must be done and uh, that isn't done elsewhere. So um, it's also why most of the board work is boring and why it is not much more open. I mean, um, if I talk about you with, uh, if you start making um, a quiz, which is which of our bills is eligible to Italian wet, which of our bills is eligible to um, British wet, and which is wet exempt, then it's utterly boring. It's it's just not something you want to do. It's it's and there are a lot of similar things and uh, paperwork compliance is a good word um, that just you no know, aren't interested in it's unlikely that a community member wants to do this and for all the other things we prepare we prefer if the community does it and um, I think the only other group where the board goes uh, waits in is when there are conflicts where understandably members of the community don't want to to make a clear position or a force position for the uh, community at large then the board should show some position where uh, what the official official stance is. So we try to be minimal. Um, a couple of years ago at a screen to screen meeting, the board actually kind of brainstormed what was what the foundation and the board supposed to do and not do. Um, that was kind of an internal documentation. And I, th I think somebody was asking me about this a couple of months ago, and maybe we should actually publish that. That, that might be useful thinking. Um, it, I don't think so. Anyway, um, uh, no, no, the, uh, anyway, um, if it isn't, we should. Um, there is, I mean, we don't have a lot of the what is and isn't part of the board's power and job is vague, and that can be good and can be bad. Um, and I think there's many people in OSMF who have different opinions about what should and shouldn't be board thing i mean uh, like the, the 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 previous talk someone made the good point that okay you're in this local chapter you want the foundation to do more but you realize that would have this effect on you are you sure you want that <laughs> um i mean most of like roland says we just sort of have to do work i view it as like being a gardener you're required to you know clean the weeds and do the boring stuff um we we don't um tell people how to map or what to map or get involved in tagging decisions. That is that is one kind of thing we um, we, we we don't do. The foundation doesn't do. Um, so it's kind of vague. Is unfortunately, the, my answer for you. <laughs> so um, the board essentially does two types of things. Uh, one of which is the reason why people tend to become interested in board work, and the other is what we spend most of our time doing. <laughs> <laughs> the first type is essentially like strategic thinking. And even though the OpenStreetMap Foundation is set up to support and not control the community, the board is still in a bit of a position to aggregate, yeah, find out what the community actually wants and try to be strategic about moving into that direction. This is something the board probably should do even more of. What we do a lot of time, however, is also that the board needs to do all sorts of operational things that we do not manage to delegate to anyone else. So everything that no one else in the community volunteers to do and where there's no obvious place like a working group or some employee or someone else to delegate it to, yeah, it's also something the board needs to handle, things that need to be done. That's especially something that is painful for people who have an officer position like the treasurer position. Um, this is probably something we as a board need to work on to be able to like reduce the workload on the seven of us to 
yeah, a more manageable level. Yeah, um, Amanda mentioned that we do not tell people how to map, and this is very important. It's a it's a clear limit of the board. We also try not to do any work that could be done by working groups or to step on the working group's toes, um, which having been on the receiving side of that is very unpleasant when when the board helicopters in and, and tells you you shouldn't be doing that kind of work you've been doing for free. Um, it's the board often ends up being the the the, the last place where work stops and, and needs to be done when, when no one else wants to do it. And so it's, I, I don't have a special hat I, I wear when I do board work or when I do working group work, um, but it, it, it tends to stop on, on your desk and you end up doing it and you end up fixing the update on the membership server uh, because CVCRM crashed again when you updated it, that, that kind of stuff. Um, it, it's, also something that changes over time what work the the board uh, does and doesn't do uh, the the strategic plan outline um, kind of says what kind of work we want to be doing in the future so maybe that's a good document to look at again if you haven't read it yet the work is done by the working groups and that's in the name i mean no, we should underline it, uh, and it's a little known fact. And if, like Florian or like many of us, you, you come to the board with uh, grand ideas about uh, new strategic directions, you're going to be disappointed because that's not where it happens. It happens uh, in the community. It's bottom up. It's not top down. So it, it's by design. That's the way the OpenStreetMap community has always worked and has succeeded uh, so far. It introduces limitations in our power, in our freedom of action, and uh, we are not company-like. So it can be a good thing and can be a bad thing, but that's currently how we are structured. So it's uh, very important to always be wary of uh, the side effects of uh, changes in governance. It's a very powerful lever, but it's also very dangerous. And yes, ultimately, the board is the backstop for uh, anything that cannot be handled anywhere else. So matters of uh, licensing, there is a licensing working group, but ultimately, some things uh, end up on the board's desk. Matters of branding, uh, the OpenStreetMap open brand is very precious. It's a, a major asset, not as important as, as our data, but uh, the license and the brand are what makes OpenStreetMap valuable ultimately. And this is something that uh, it's up to the board to uh, be the ultimate defender of, but mostly it's boring. And you really need to be aware that uh, the board is uh, maybe the last place where you want to be if you want to change things. Um, there are many other avenues and the bulk of the work is uh, in the working group. But the board is a necessary backstop for all that activities. I'll take one online question first and then go to Alan. Um, but the online question is relevant to the topic which we just touched on. How do you rate the health of working groups in 2022? Have they recruited enough new volunteers in the last year? Are they mostly made up of the same few overburdened volunteers as last year? Um, I should point out, you don't all have to answer every single question. Yeah, but I feel qualified to answer this one because just the last year before we kick-started the engineering working group. We, in this case, was the engineering working group, me, before becoming a board member. We have a couple of other working groups that are working very well. And uh, so I'd say well, there could always be more. The working groups themselves know best whether they want more members or not. It's uh, and 
I'm not aware of what that we are at the moment missing a working group that we would deliberately would uh, like to restart it. So I think it's it's fine from the working group perspective. Um, I'm also on the communications working group, and there has been, you know, two or three new members in the last year, maybe. Um, I think it's the CWG is probably doing about as much work as it had has been doing for like the last couple of years, but I think it could be doing much more and probably should. Um, so it's kind of stable-ish, but should be doing more would be my opinion as one CWG member. The membership working group is very quiet at the moment. Uh, if you would like to help out with uh, dealing with the foundation uh, administrative side, please join. I uh, want to respond to the last question posed to Florian about why we need change. Um, and uh, then I'd like to get the board's reaction to my response. Uh, I'm going to read an excerpt from the strategic plan outline. You know, why do we need change? And in the strategic plan outline, we say the project and its community seek not growth per se, but rather data quality. As a result of this philosophy, growth has found OpenStreetMap and demand for its data now increases by no less than 20 to 30% year on year. This growth is straining the project's volunteer workforce, its hardware and software platform, and it threatens the long-term viability of the project. Unlike most private companies, which seek growth and develop strategic plans to achieve it, OpenStreetMap is in the position of needing a strategy for coping with a growth rate it did not and does not intentionally encourage. Is that still true? I mean, is that still the, a rationale for needing needing a, a strategic plan? Relatively simply, we have growth pain. So it's it's on the work side, it's still true. Of course, we welcome growing. But then again, uh, if you think in terms of retention, it's always, it's not just uh, growing isn't, uh, isn't good on its own right. We need such people there where there's a good chance that they are with us in the community for multiple years. And so um, it's difficult to say from the growth numbers whether it's uh, enough or too few because we don't know the retention. I mean, I think it is obvious that, you know, if you count the number of nodes or the number of contributors, that number does go up. A lot of that I don't think really makes, you know, it's not like our software falls over a lot or anything. You know, we are, we are relatively stable enough with that and there are kind of easy-ish ways to solve that. Um, I think as we get better, bigger, you know, there'll be new use cases um, for like OpenStreetMap data that that is more like we're not properly using or promoting or doing things that we have. And this is why I'm glad to see new software like, you know, either Every Door or Street Complete or any of these things that, that can allow us to, you know, be more than just streets, you know, OpenStreetMap. Um, this is, I think, almost a question for the OpenStreetMap community as a whole versus the board. Um, I think the OSM community is doing well by coming up with new tools and new ways of tagging things and new tagging proposals and and new uses of OSM data. I think I think that that's good that we're taking advantage of of that. Um, I'm not really sure what the board can do there. Hmm. So yes, uh, I would still definitely agree that we are essentially forced to grow um, by the demand, by the evolving ecosystem, and by essentially the direction the project and our environment are going in. Even relatively core tasks that pretty much everyone agrees the foundation is responsible for, such as managing the API, do apparently require us to undertake development efforts of a scale that is beyond what we have done so far. So it's inevitably that we need growth. We are growing in terms of budget, in terms of 
amount of uh, work that we do, people working for us, and I expect that yeah, managing this growth somehow is going to be essentially the main challenge for the board and the foundation as a whole in the years coming. Uh, yes, I, I, I really like that passage of, of the strategic plan. And uh, when we think growth, we think, oh, more money or more nodes, or, but there's also a growth in maturity. Um, one of the things I'm happiest about what we've done this year is hiring Grant, uh, having someone working full time and having the capacity to fundraise to pay someone to work full time um, and all the changes that came with it is is a complete change in, in how we run yeah, on how we keep the servers running. About growth, uh, growth in the sen in the quantitative sense, but growth also in the sense of maturing, and that has good and bad uh, inferences. For example, we change, we we get older. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, ultimately, we we all get older, and uh, the community uh, we, we have a gener generational change. Uh, so that's not growth like more of the same, that's uh, growth uh, like also maybe different people, different usages. Uh, the way the operating map data is used uh, is now different, it was uh, years ago. And that has uh, also consequences that we must take into account because uh, maybe those are new markets. Maybe uh, we, we are optimizing old ways maybe we are getting extremely efficient at doing things which are no longer relevant. So that's part of the challenges is that in growing, uh, we must manage that change. And uh, there is a lot of unknown and that's where I think the decentralized nature of the community uh, is a huge asset because uh, we spread the risk and we leverage uh, the diversity of all the communities. So um, maybe we don't have new ideas, but uh, you people will have them and they will rise and we'll get hold of them and uh, leverage them. But uh, that's part of the growth process. We are getting mature. So mature means uh, more efficient, but it also means that some ideas ossify and they need to be renewed. Uh, well, um, I'm going to go back to the hall in a second, um, but I'm going to ask one question from the Vicky, not the one you expect. There's a, a further question from Stefan Keller, and I'm slightly biased because I've suggested the same thing to the board. I would like to encourage the board to establish and massively strengthen business contacts Business to business is a very efficient way to strengthen and spread OSM. Specifically, I think a board member should be made responsible for B2B. Or well, I've suggested in the past that we have a business development position in the board. <laughs> um. Short answer, yes, we should have someone. It, we, we regularly get um, inquiries from from uh, companies. Uh, oh, we'd like to switch to OSM. Is it possible to do it in this way? And then do I want to spend the afternoon on talking to that person or or do I want to do something else? Yeah, it's it's difficult on the on the limited time that the board has right now, but it, it would be very useful. Okay, I'm going to go back up there and then come down here again. Just keeping me fit at my old age. Hi, do you have any idea of what percentage um, of companies that use um, OpenStreetMap mapping software um, versus how many actually financially contribute? 
And is there a way of increasing that? And not only increasing that, but at the moment, you know, the memberships are, are, are the corporate memberships anyway, are, are annual. And it'd be lovely if you could get the companies to properly commit to five years of funding and things like that so that you can have a better chance of looking at your long-term income and making really good plans rather than you know it really just being a one-year snapshot The usage by commercial companies, uh, quite weird statistics. Um, on the overpass, I have seen requests from, I think, 80 or 85 percent of the public IP4 space. So you can basically assume that every company, uh, every larger company in the world has tried out somewhere or the other um, open street map. So it's really simple. We are known everywhere. That's not the problem. The problem is to, um, to get the people in, in a proper relationship. I think it's tricky because basically you can use it without paying and it's just something that's not and for this point I would say it's 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 what's really needed instead of just the business to business contact we need to understand and offer what the uh, um, business cases are why companies should and uh, support um open street bed, not what we want but rather what's the business model that you could uh, book properly onto your account such that we get money in the end there are some ways for this. There's a certain sponsorship, but it's sort of indirect. It's also the corporate membership, which is sort of indirect. We, um, it's our accountant, so it's um, so we had discussions with her about um, the tax implications of some of the things we offer current, currently with the corporate memberships. And that's of course a difficult two-way thing because if we slightly change, tweak the corporate membership rules to better fit into uh, tax categories, then um, it might look very weird from the community's perspective if you just say, uh, well, the press release is, I don't remember the detail, the press release is difficult and other things are easy and we could offer this and that. And I think it's extremely difficult. I have exactly zero experience about what you do, how to do it right, how to make packages for the companies. It's easy to have in their bookkeeping. I think the companies have understood the value in OpenStreetMap. It's just that it's difficult to pay for something that's basically, uh, that you could basically get for free. And we have to figure out to find this business, a business person who brings the experience with this. And uh, so Simon says, or Stefan Keller, they have experience with this. I would be the first person to immediately appoint him as a special uh, B2B director, but um, we will see whether some people come up with experience with this. And there's loads of companies that are using OSM, but like, you know, your local pizzeria has a map on their website with how to get there and it uses OSM tiles. Technically a commercial company using OSM, no, they're not a corporate member. We have about, I think, 20 to 30 corporate members. I do like your idea of it not being a one-year commitment, but a multi-year commitment. That That's quite good. Um, there's many companies that might sort of pay another company to do things, like my, my employer for its open stream map issue services or overpass services, and then my employer sponsors SOTOM or um, produces data that OSMers can use. So this would be a company, paying another company that then results in good things for OSM. So it's like, does that count as part of OSM F corporate? Or it's a commercial company that is indirectly contributing to the open street map project. That's, that's difficult to, um, to use, to, to, to calculate. So, I mean, to answer your question, I think, the percentage of people who directly give money to the OSMF is tiny, but that's not necessarily to be expected to be different. I had a very happy surprise when we started fundraising for the two roles of uh, ID developer and uh, site reliability engineer. Um, because there was lots of enthusiasm from, from the corporate users of OSM. And um, we, we, we can't be naive. We, the, the corporate members do not become corporate members because the board is so good looking. 
uh, or because uh, OSM is is a fun, cute thing to do. It's because it's very useful, and um, what what we are in effect providing to to our don donors is um, stability, reliability, and that that's what I think um, we have to we have to communicate in in our fundraising. Um, the vast majority of users of any open project uh, will never pay for it, and that's the same in any open source software. Um, and that's fine. The, the goal of the foundation is to be used widely, not to raise the most money. Um, it, it does uh, ruffle more feathers when, when someone doesn't attribute properly than when they're not paying for it uh, funnily, funnily enough. Um, Ultimately, it's a user acquisition pipeline. Uh, we're not going to cold call uh, any corporation uh, asking them for money because that's not the way we establish a relationship. But um, it starts with the majority of usage, which is uh, just a stupid map background. That's what most open source map usage is. And those users are not going to commit to anything because they don't care, because it could be OpenStreetMap or anything else. It wouldn't make a difference for them. But as uh, usage progresses into something more sophisticated, which is uh, more tightly bound to the data, which uh, it becomes more interactive, which has more uh, specific quality requirements, uh, that's when uh, the idea becomes began to develop uh, with users that, uh, yeah, uh, maybe uh, I should talk to them because, uh, as Guillaume said, uh, uh, that's going to be uh, critical to my business in some way. So uh, maybe uh, I should uh, ask them to do something for me and then give them a, some money so that uh, that specific bit which is critical to my business becomes more reliable. So uh, that's more a business development process and uh, yes, uh, maybe we should uh, make it uh, as a, an actually managed process with someone uh, overseeing it. That's not the case currently. And maybe we should uh, follow the, the pipeline uh, as anyone will do in a company with uh, new acquisitions. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, there is more to it than uh, just asking nicely. It's uh, about developing uh, the partnership. For you, do you have? Up here and then to your host, uh, Victor. Yeah. Uh, hi. I would like to ask what is the vision of committee on uh, principle of truth on the ground and political discussions? Because we still have an uh, open street map objects which are artificial, like names and uh, and borders, which are made by political decisions. And if we say that we invented uh, a, a universal principle that solves all political discussions, I think it's not really true. So it's still I th what I see is committee involved. And if we say, for example, that local chapters need to make decisions on local, uh, then we need to then draw borders for local chapters. So what is the vision actually on that topic? Slightly tricky question. Does anybody want to take it? Names are real. Orders are real. Ask anyone who tries to cross a border and you'll find out it's quite real. Um, I'm not really sure there's any political or any philosophical change we need to make to OSM in terms of my opinion, you know, I mean, we're not deleting names. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't think there's any change that needs to be done unless there's a hidden subtext that I seem to be missing. Maybe I tend to prefer more direct questions. I think in many places. Sorry, sorry. Okay, then just a moment. Thank you. you can be here. <laughs>
Um, I think in many places of the world we have um, local chapters, and as we have a principle of um, devolution in as much as possible, we would first uh, take into account their position, and only if it's not possible to to apply that, then obviously in the, in the case we have never seen before that we have two local chapters of who disagree on their respective borders, or respective common borders. It's, it's basically the only case where you really actually need for sure make a decision some way or the other. And um, so besides that, um, it's extremely difficult if there's no local community, it means we have no local knowledge of what's going on. And then obviously in the OSM way, we cannot have a reliable border. It's tautological in that sense. And uh, if the rest agrees, I would just uh, hand over the microphone to Grant. One thing I would like to have long term is the ability to show multiple points of views of borders that would certainly make lives easier, even for some local communities. Um, but you can go somewhere and ask people, where am I? And they will tell you, you're in Italy, this is called Florence, and that therefore there is a border and there is a name. And so that for me counts as on the ground. Grant? Do you want to come up here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the on the ground rule is generally a very good one. A lot of the, the debate in OpenStreetMap or or the edit wars that we have are people changing what's the default name of a place? Should it be in Russian or should it be in Ukrainian, for example? And I think that is actually a technical problem. I think if we can do vector tiles, as uh, Guillaume was kind of hinting at, we can display things how people expect it to be displayed, you know, possibly in their language or some something, and dynamic rendering based on the person who's viewing it is how many other mapping organizations do it. You know, uh, China will see borders the way they want to see them. As long as we have the data, we should represent it how, how people kind of expect it. And the default name is contextual based on who is viewing it. it. That's my personal view, but we should contain the data that represents all those views. And uh, yeah, that's my, my view on that. Yeah, I, I I could probably talk 30 minutes on this now, but I'm going to refrain from doing that. Joost. Uh, so uh, while the board is, is mostly uh, talking about uh, being as minimalist as possible, uh, some huge changes have been made in the last couple of years. Uh, like your directly funding ID, uh, you hired a sysadmin, uh, you have twice as many local chapters to keep in touch with. Um, uh, you've done the micro grants project. So there is a lot of a lot more work than there used to be. There's still only seven of you. Um, and if, if we want to do something like Florian suggests, which I think we should, um, then the workload will only increase. So are you discussing within the board how, how you can manage that, how you can cope with that as, as human beings? Um, what are solutions to that to, to be able to do what needs to be done? I think it's basically what I referred to as growth pain for Alan's question, that not everything scales the same way. You shouldn't augment the board because it's already very difficult to find uh, candidates for the board, so it doesn't make sense to make it even bigger. And uh, despite having problems to find decisions, if you make it even bigger. So uh, obviously you need another layer of interaction and um, there had been considerations. I would call it, uh, talk it very um, vaguely, intentionally, to, to have a position like a community manager or so. But at the moment, we don't even know what we could and what we shouldn't offload, because there's always a lot of fine print. For example, like this, uh, would you see this decision to, to change the package of the corporate memberships? I mean, you cannot just do it outside of the community. Obviously, the community must be, must be involved. 
is this something the board could just go over and wait for the decision to come around or something and there are a lot of these um, that's um, the nature of this catch all that uh, you get a lot of these uh, singular decisions where, you're, um, where it's extremely difficult to, to put them into a process and uh, to devolve them so we hope a little bit um, if we have a position in that direction deeply embedded in the community we can devolve a lot of decisions i mean in starting with with grant grant is very self-responsible you can already devolve a lot of decisions where we don't even need to to know about how to make them and in that sense that is going but it's a measure of trust of finding people who we trust and so you cannot make a plan and uh, in march we have uh, half a position for doing this there will be a point where the money is there where we have a plausible candidate and where we just appoint and um, there's nothing that's susceptible to planning. Um, I think, yeah, we don't have a lot of people standing for the board. And so I, I think I think expanding the board is not a bad idea. I think I think it'd be a good idea. But I think you would need more people to stand, and that would include some people in this room should stand, hint, hint. Um, I mean, some of the some of the stuff like we've more local chapters to talk to, but most of the time they tend to manage their own affairs and don't really there is there isn't a lot of actually talking and communication that's actually needed there which is good likewise um the sort of employees the newer employees we have have been quite they're quite clever and self-managed people so they can usually do their own thing um i mean i think i think if sometimes if you're i, I think if you want to be do something to make it easier for us volunteer board members to do things i think you should be kind of kinder to us on the board well kinder to people on the board or volunteers because it's it's very easy to just take to twitter and snark about something so which can mean that you kind of want to spend more time doing something one approach i'm that i'm sort of maybe thinking of trying to myself is to be a little bit more shorter and um you know like instead of spending ages writing an email to make sure you get the tone right and make sure you get this and then you got to do this and then you got to write this up and stuff you could just spend less time on things but that would mean then you might be like oh well this you know doesn't have all these details or you didn't answer this question or whatever so i think if you people cut volunteers more slack uh, they it might make their life much easier and they might be less discouraged um so that's something that osmf members could do um to help make it uh, uh, easier so um, ultimately I believe that we are coming to a point where the capacity of the current board to handle even more growth even more responsibility um, is not going to scale anymore we could try to get a bit more by like making the board bigger if we find people who are willing to do it, but there's also a tight limit on that to still keeping a functioning body. So I think if we want further growth, we will need some different solution, one that allows us to offload work onto other people who will probably have to be paid to do that because yeah, there are very few people who are crazy enough to do this type of work for free. Um, this leads us to several unpleasant possibilities. Uh, some people have suggested, uh, like replacing the volunteer board with a paid board, which I do not like at all. Some people have also suggested to essentially hire some people for things that the board could then delegate to them, which I also do not particularly like. And the thing is, I think a lot of people also don't really like those options. And this is where a lot of the popularity of keeping things minimal comes from, because it allows us to not have to choose any of these um, unpleasant options. But yeah, if we accept that we need to grow, then we will probably have to find some solution that shifts some responsibility to probably paid people. Um, and the question then becomes, how do we structure that in a way that doesn't also move all the power to these people who are not directly accountable to the membership through some kind of vote? And I don't have an answer to that, but it is a problem that we definitely need to 
space and that we are starting to talk about in the board as well. Um, one good example of, of uh, an OSM organization that has hired an, an executive director who does fantastic work is OSM US. Um, and um, it, it, it is something that that we are discussing a lot. As you can see, we do not all agree. Uh, I, I think we all agree that the workload is increasing and that the number of fingers on our hands isn't. Um, I like the idea of having uh, someone like like OSM US has uh, for the OSM Foundation, but maybe th this is us answering the question. The question should be more towards the room and on how people feel about the idea of, of having of the USMF having someone like that. Um, but otherwise, I think one of the things that your you start when you were on the board, um, we argue a lot less than previous boards maybe did. Um, Alan, who's over there, left us with some excellent work ethics, um, reorganized the board with all of us. And um, so I think it's always talking to people who were on the board a long time ago and uh, they used to argue all the time and not get anything done and accuse themselves of terrible things. And um, that's not constructive. I, I think I, I, I like the people I'm on the board with and um, that we get good work done like that. And that, that's been a very positive thing. It keeps it interesting as well. Yeah, clearly the solution is not to scale up the board itself. Uh, if we move up to the next uh, prime number up, that might be beneficial for the political stability of the board, uh, because of course a smaller number is more fragile and subject to uh, violent move uh, in case, uh, during elections. But that's not where the solution is. Now, I'm, I'm very wary of creating a case of uh, intermediaries uh, whose self-interest will inevitably diverge from uh, those uh, of the community. So of course, the role of the board is to oversee and uh, keep the executives uh, and keep um, the providers of services uh, in line with uh, the values and objectives uh, of the foundation, but it's a big risk and there are many cases of organizations where uh, the salaried cadre um, has uh, drifted uh, a bit from uh, the original values. So we are very, very careful with that. And that's why um, the people who are now on a salariat position with the foundation have been hired for very specific technical tasks. Uh, and that to us makes sense. And that's a small step that uh, we've taken, which is actually a big step considering our past, but it's a careful one. Uh, I, I'm, I, I find the idea of an executive director is extremely scary, uh, but we can always talk about it and uh, the answer will not come from the board. It will come uh, from you. So there have to be discussions about uh, all the possible ways this could be to go. But uh, if I also express one specific position about it is to make it incremental in small steps because there are risk and uh, we must be conservative in the way we approach uh, the problem. Thank you. Uh, we've used up the time. I apologize to everybody who didn't get to ask a question. Um, obviously the board is available online, the mailing lists, and, and I quite like the idea of complaining on Twitter. Not even I have done that up to now. Thank you for the hint. <laughs> yes, I never do. Yeah. So anyway, thank you much, very much for being here. Thank you to the board.